A vaccine developed by scientists at Oxford is set to transform the battle against coronavirus across the globe. In trials, the vaccine proved highly efficient at stopping people developing symptoms of COVID-19. The results suggest 70% protection, but by adjusting the dose, the protection could rise to as high as 90%. And while other vaccines have reported higher protection, the great advantage of the Oxford one is that it's cheaper, it's far easier to store and thus easier to deliver around the world. Now, during the day, the Prime Minister described the results as incredibly exciting, but urged caution in the meantime, as he outlined the restrictions for England after the current lockdown ends on the 2nd of December. We'll have more on that in just a moment. First, our medical editor, Fergus Walsh, reports on the Oxford vaccine. For the first time since this wretched virus took hold, we can see a route out of the pandemic. We are just delighted um, here in Oxford. It's huge, huge congratulations to you all and your teams. It's the third goal in the back of the net now. Oxford has created a vaccine not just for Britain, but for the world. The scientists involved say it brings us closer to a return to normal life. I can definitely see a future beyond the pandemic. I, I think uh, that we will be able to roll out vaccines in the first half of next year and have a big impact here in the UK. But for humanity, we have to be able to distribute all around the world, and that's going to take a bit longer. In less than a year, scientists here have created a brand new vaccine and run large-scale trials. Now, at last, they know it works. There were more than 20,000 volunteers on the trial in the UK and Brazil. Overall, two doses of the vaccine were around 70% effective in preventing COVID-19. But among volunteers who got a half dose followed by a full one, effectiveness rose to 90%. Importantly, there were no cases of serious COVID disease among those who got the vaccine. Right, then, so I've got over here cough 510 The UK has pre-ordered enough doses to immunise 50 million people in the UK. The elderly in care homes would be first in line, then the over 80s and frontline health workers. Along with Pfizer and Moderna, it means there are now three COVID vaccines which could be approved next month. Like the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, the key to the Oxford jab is the spike protein which sits on the surface of coronavirus. Scientists have taken the gene for this protein and put it into a virus that causes the common cold in chimpanzees. The virus has been modified and disabled so it can't cause disease in humans. Once in the body, the vaccine instructs cells to make the coronavirus spike protein. This prompts the immune system to create Y-shaped antibodies. In the event of future exposure, these should latch onto coronavirus and prevent infection. And it stimulates T cells, another part of the immune system. These should destroy cells that have become infected. This is a really important day for scientists here in Oxford and for the fight against coronavirus. The data is still being analysed, but their vaccine appears to prevent serious illness with COVID and most infections. Now that could have a major impact on the pandemic here in the UK and worldwide. Although the vaccine was created in record time, Oxford says no shortcuts have been taken with safety and side effects have been mostly mild. Edward was one of the very first volunteers. It's pretty amazing how fast everything is, but really how careful and, and considered everything has been done. Everything is there, we can trust it. And so it's really exciting to see the results. AstraZeneca, Oxford's commercial partner, has pledged never to make a profit from the vaccine in poorer countries. And their jab is far cheaper, easier to store and transport around the world than others. The supply chain that we put in place for next year will give us a capacity of up to 3 billion doses, which will include not just the developed world, but many regions of the developing world as well. And because this vaccine is just refrigerated, it makes it much easier to distribute and administer. But don't underestimate the hurdles ahead. Immunising the UK, let alone the world, will be a huge undertaking. Drive-through centres like this one in Greater Manchester, currently providing flu jabs, are likely to be used for COVID vaccines. And even if a million adults a week are immunised, 
It'll be months before these vials help clear a path through the pandemic. And uh, Fergus is back from Oxford uh, and with me now in the studio. This is the third vaccine we've been discussing. Lots of excitement, understandably, about this one, uh, Fergus. The question for lots of people at home is when? You know, when will we see the vaccine? When will people actually be treated with it? It is astonishing, Hugh, that we now have three vaccines that can prevent serious COVID infection. It's going to take a week or two for AstraZeneca to get their paperwork together and submit it to regulators. Pfizer's already done that. We might see the first vaccines being approved early in December. and We might see some immunisation before the end of the year. But the vast majority is going to be done in 2021. The Prime Minister says he'd like the vast majority of vulnerable people to have been immunised by Easter in early April. Well, there are 12 million over 65s. To add to that, all the frontline healthcare workers. So the younger you are, the longer you're going to have to wait. If you're under 50, you might have to wait till the summer. But we do need people, we do need adults to take up the offer of vaccination. It's not going to be compulsory. We need maybe 60 or 70 percent of adults to be immunised to curb the spread of the virus. Now, we don't know how long protection will last. At some point, we may need booster doses. So we shouldn't expect the vaccine to change our lives this winter. But thanks to science, the path out of this pandemic is looking ever clearer. Fergus, good to talk to you again. Thank you very much. Fergus Walsh there, our medical editor.